Thanks, guys. Uh, we're on to Georgia Tech and uh, excited for the prep and love rivalry week uh, across the country. What makes college football really special to me is all the rivalries you get to watch uh, on this week, very unique week timing-wise. Uh, a lot of distractions with uh, Thanksgiving going on. Um, those are good distractions, uh, but they are different. So um, how you manage that and how you deal with that is important. Uh, a lot of respect for Brent uh, Key and his staff. I've known Brent a long time. He played at Tech when I played here. Uh, his staff does a great job. Obviously, there's several guys on his staff that we have worked with uh, before, a lot of uh, overlap. And I think we're both very thankful for a state of high school football in Georgia that provides both of us with uh, a lot of really good football players. Um, he's done a tremendous job this year. Buster's done a tremendous job for them. And uh, Kevin taking over the defense. Um, kind of midstream there, has done a really good job. So with that, we'll turn it to Georgia Tech. Yeah, Coach, it's been mentioned multiple times this year from different players about how Georgia Tech is specifically uh, a rivalry that you mentioned at the top. What is it about Georgia Tech that you dislike so much, or why are they your premier rival, according to your players? Well, geographically, they're close, right? They're in our state. Um, you're playing for something. Uh, every time you play them because you're playing for state championship and I think that's uh, that's always important and um, you know they do a, they do a good job but it's, it's it's the next opponent I don't rank them any higher than anybody else because I, I look at all the games as rivalries and I let everybody else debate what's the highest I don't get into those comparisons but uh, a lot of respect for Brent and the job they do. Kirby to your left, what do you see as the biggest difference in a team that's won as many games this year as their last two years combined? And a little bit, if you can, on uh, Haynes King, their quarterback, how he's established himself in that system. Yeah, they've won games because they, they're, they're playing good football. Number one, they've uh, uh, done a good job upgrading talent. He understands what it takes to win at Tech, what kind of players to go recruit. And I think as he gets his recruiting classes in there, he's not going to do anything but get better. But when you got an offensive line coach as the head coach, you're going to have a physical, tough team. Like, that's number one. Hank King is like that. He's fast. Uh, he's athletic. You know, we've got several coaches that came from the Texas area that talked about his uh, athleticism in high school, and you see it on tape. Uh, Buster's done an unbelievable job with him, and he utilizes his entire skill set. These guys know how to run the football now. They are really good at running the football. They find uh, best runs available, scheme runs, quarterback runs, unbalanced runs, good backs. Uh, really tough O-line, so like it, it, it's a day's work when you go to play these guys with the way they play in terms of toughness and, and all those things. That's what's allowed them to win is they have uh, an identity. Kirby, do you guys have a sense of the severity of Lad's ankle injury and just his availability going into this week? Yeah, he's got a, a tweaked ankle that he tweaked in the game here at home. Uh, he was able to go a little bit some at the end of the week, but didn't practice much. It bothered him a little bit uh, Saturday, but nothing any more severe than that. I mean, we've done MRI since the game and uh, doing even more testing, but feel good that he's going to be able to return. It's not, I guess, somebody said right before I came in here, Claude said there's questions about tightrope surgery. That's not the case at all. I don't know where that's coming from. Coach, you talked about all the familiarity on their staff, obviously Buster and Kevin and, and a couple of players over there. I just wonder, uh, what what is the logistical uh, issues with it? Are there logistical issues with that in terms of just, I don't know, maybe how you make checks, what you use for checks or signs or different things like that? Or is it more intangible than just knowing what, what it is you're trying to achieve in, in different situations? No, no, no issues. Kirby, this game in Atlanta has been a noon game, I think, uh, for all your years as head coach. What do you think of playing this at night? And obviously, uh, you know, you and Bama have a game the week after as well. Not a lot of change in preparation. I mean, it's different because of the timing of our kids coming back from Thanksgiving, getting here, going over there. The, the Saturday will be different, but that's really the extent of it, you know. Uh, cooler night, but that's, that's what we deal with all the time, right? We've had a lot more night games this year than we've had in the past. I know you've got a lot of metrics to look at when you're gauging your team's health or energy level, and you mentioned last week a, a little, I think, I don't know if you used the word tired, you may have. How do you how do you keep your team on edge and ready to play physical, but at the same time take your foot off the gas and get them that extra breath they need during the week, I guess? 
Yeah, I think there's mental and physical exhaustion. They're two different things. And uh, you, you got to balance those two things and weigh them. You can have both. You can have one or the other. Uh, you're trying to have neither. And as a coach, you're always trying to balance those two pendulums uh, best you can. And uh, I, don't, I don't think you ever know for sure. I think you uh, sense things and you talk to your players. And if they're honest with you and tell you how they feel, you, know, you listen to them. Yeah, I noticed Warren Brinson didn't make the trip. Is it still the calf injury there with him? And then Ra Ra, you said it wasn't an ankle on Saturday. Is it still sort of a foot injury, I guess, that he had tweaked? Yeah, Ra Ra, Ra has a, a foot sprain. Um, we don't know the severity of it. Uh, it's it's really probably better listed as a bone bruise on his foot. Uh, I think he's going to be okay, but we don't know that. I mean, we'll see here during the week if he's able to go. Um, and then Warren had the calf strain, yeah, and he was not. We wanted him to be able to get rehab and stay here and get well, and hopefully he's able to go today. Hey, Kirby, uh, back in June, uh, the longtime children's health care representative, Shelton Stevens, yeah. passed. Uh, you have some good memories about him, and then can you also talk about the presentation of the Governor's Cup and being on both sides of it? Yeah, I've never been on the Georgia Tech side of it. Oh, okay. I got you. Uh, he, 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 uh, he, Shelton is a great, great man. I have a lot of respect for Shelton and what he's done. I think the immediate image I get when I think of, of Choa is Shelton Stevens. He, he embodies and embraces everything they stand for and did such great work for them for a long time. I mean, I, I've known Shelton for a long time. I didn't really know Shelton until I got to be a head coach. And the one thing I'll say about him is he, he, he's always – he always did the duty that lies nearest, and that's the kind of person he was. Kirby, Georgia Tech's got one of the top scoring offenses in the ACC. Just what do they do that makes them so effective? Talked about it a little bit earlier. They have a quarterback that can run the ball, which gets you an extra hat in it. He's really fast and really athletic, who happens to throw the ball really well, too, and he has speed on the perimeter. They've gone out and got some really good, fast uh, receivers, some through the portal, some through the high school ranks uh, that are playing at a high level. Uh, they know what they're doing in the run game. They know how to attack you, where to attack you. Uh, they understand it and they have good backs. So, I mean, it's the same questions you have against our offense. When, when you got people that know what they're doing and they got good players doing it, uh, they become really hard to stop. And uh, they, they, they are really good offensively. Okay, we go through 11 games. Your team hasn't given up uh, a punt return yard yet, uh, not even listed. What goes into that, and have you ever had that in your career? No, never had that in the career. Never, I don't know that I've ever seen it. Um, I've actually seen negative more than I've seen zero return yards because we've played a couple teams that have held people to negative return yards, meaning the returner went backwards, uh, but he got a return. Uh, ours has just been uh, the fact that have, having given up a return is really a credit to the, the staff, the punt coaching staff, the punt players, and the punter who has to match distance with hang, and you have to have elite coverage and gunners. And, uh, you know, I don't think people give enough credit to Arian and Dom. They've been our gunners, I think, on every single rep of every single game uh, that the game was not at hand. They've been out there, and uh, they've done an incredible job. I mean, it comes back to your punter and your gunners uh, to how you do things. And it's pretty remarkable what they've been able to do, but we've also had fewer punts than – what most teams have, which helps with that stat. Kirby, having uh, been on staff at Alabama and, and being born in that state, how much did you know about Bear Bryant and Gene Stallings' teams that won as many games in a row as you guys have? Uh, I was too young on the Bear Bryant teams. My, my parents would tell me about them, and uh, my dad coached during his tenure there. And then with Gene Stallings, I was actually in Georgia, so. Uh, was you know starting to follow college football in and around uh, the South during that time, but not not a lot. I was too young. Hey, coach, you mentioned the challenges of Thanksgiving being this week. Does anything change in terms of practice or weight room or nutrition leading up to Thanksgiving or afterwards? Because you know they're going to consume a lot of calories on Thursday. Just time. I mean, our times are, are off a little bit. You know, we move practice up a little bit Wednesday, up a little bit Thursday. Uh, do some extra things Friday to help activate and get going. Um, changing times, not changing routine, which, I mean, the changing times makes for a change in routine. Uh, but that's the biggest changes. Yeah, what's allowed Carson to be as consistent as he has been, especially over the sort of the second half of the season with what he's doing on a week-by-week -week basis? 
uh, protection scheme, hard work on his part. That's probably it. Protection scheme, hard work on his part, watching tape, and uh, and, and really good uh, skill player play. Um, last year, when uh, Mike Bobo and Buster Faulkner were, were both on the staff together, how, how were their roles? Like, what were their separate roles? And then, second, kind of what have you seen out of the the job that Buster's done at, at, at Tech this year? Yeah, I think I mentioned earlier, he's done a phenomenal job, and I'm sure he would be the first to tell you that it's not he that gets all the credit. He has a great staff of offensive coaches with him. Uh, they do a great job. Their offensive line uh, is dirty, nasty, physical, play hard, everything you want in your offensive line. You can tell they're a unit. And like I said, your head coach is an offensive line guy. That's what you're going to get. Um, uh, Buster's done really well offensively everywhere he's been. I mean, statistically, the reason he came here was because he wanted to get an opportunity at uh, a, a bigger Power Five school, and he got that that opportunity. Uh, he came here, he did good things, he helped us tremendously, he helped the coaches, he brought ideas to our staff. Uh, I think he and Mike both played a major support role for uh, Todd uh, last year, and Todd would be the first to say they were both idea guys. They brought ideas to the table. Uh, they they great to bounce ideas off of. It's always extra great to have an extra set of eyes. Uh, the thing about Buster is he never cared really who got the credit or what the role was. You know he played a, a key part in uh, helping Coach Munkin uh, with Stetson uh, in terms of developing him. Kirby, what uh, stood out to you about Don Blaylock while he was here, and, and just what's it been like seeing him have success since he's left? Yeah, selflessness. I mean, probably the number one thing that stands out, toughness. Uh, he's such a great competitor. Um, Dom's one of those that he just never says anything. He doesn't complain. He doesn't moan. He, uh, he goes to work every day. Um, he made some really, really big critical plays for us uh, over the years in terms of the stretch run, going back to his freshman year, touchdown catches, all the way to last year making plays. Uh, he's just very dependable. And uh, you've seen the same thing there. Uh, they, they've got him returning punts and, and doing things offensively. You can see uh, his value as a football player. Kirby, another uh, Buster question. Uh, when you have someone who is so involved with the offense like you know, he's been for the past few years, does that cause you all to, I don't say initially change, not, but change what you're doing, but does that give you other concerns that, hey, that he might know kind of you know, no. we might be doing that situation? There's this thing called tape, and they, 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 they watch it. And they see what you do, and there's, there's no there's no secrets. Like there's no secrets out there. They're not going to go out there and trick them and say, "Who man, Buster knows when that uh, double reverse pass throwback to Brock Bowers is coming." I mean, he doesn't he doesn't know when that's coming. And uh, I think you waste a lot of time and energy thinking about that. I think it's great for you guys to write about. Sorry, I didn't give you more juice on it. <laughs> Kirby, how's uh, Tate Routledge, and how did you guys feel Micah played stepping in for more playing time? Mike has been playing. Mike has been playing uh, a good bit. I thought uh, he did a good job. Um, continues to work hard, uh, get better, condition himself. Um, Tate's good. Tate has a bone bruise. Uh, he banged uh, knees like we thought. Uh, he's sore yesterday and is sore today, uh, limping around, but no structural damage, which is good. And uh, will be just a, a timetable of how long it takes to turn around. Hey, Kirby, uh, obviously the players were different from last year's game with Tech, but they really came out, and in my opinion, they, 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 they won the first quarter for sure. Uh, Might have been tied. What do you think they did in that last year? That Was it a surprise, or did they just, you know, hit, come to the strike first? No, they, they had a good plan. They did a good job. They have good players. Uh, I thought they had uh, a good plan. We we didn't play uh, exceptionally well early, uh, for whatever reason. But um, they did a good job. I mean, I think when you got good coaches and good players, uh, that's what you have to defend. You know, you got to go out and play well. They they certainly did a great job uh, starting it off last year. Georgia Tech's been able to create a lot of turnovers this year. Just what stands out to you about the way they attack and the way they approach defense? Yeah, I think uh, Kevin, having worked with him before, we all know that games turn on explosive plays and turnovers. you got to find ways to get those. And uh, they've been really disruptive doing that. I know how hard Kevin and them work at it, just like we do. So they've been able to capitalize on those things. And that's big. That turnover margin is one of the biggest stats out there. Kirby, uh, this year two for Malachi, um, 
he's obviously coached a lot of you know good comparisons. I won't go there, but he he has evolved. What's his ceiling? Where do you see him at right now? Um, he's really athletic. He gives he could go out and probably play, play corner for us if he had to. I think when you you know you look at players, you say what can he do and what can he do. Uh, he can do a lot of things, and there's very little that he can't do. Um, he, he's gotten tougher and more physical with his tackling. Uh, he's much more knowledgeable and confident in his abilities. Uh, he understands the check system. Uh, he gives us the luxury of being able to do, you know, extra things that maybe people can't do. I mean, a lot of safeties can't t really tackle well and play uh, play man. He, he gives us the ability to do uh, both those things, and he's done nothing but get better and lead since getting here. Kirby, can you give us an update on uh, Brock Bowers? We saw he's limping. You said on TV that you asked him, he said he was fine, but he looked like he was in pain. And can, do you have any updates on Dumas Johnson and uh, Julian Humphrey? Yeah, uh, both those guys are fighting to get back. Uh, they're week to week and uh, trying to get back as soon as they can. Um, Brock, Brock feels good. I think he's a little sore. What's happening is he's using it. He's, he's on his ankle more during the game and obviously getting live tackled and the catches he got, there's more soreness after the game than there is during the week. So the recovery uh, takes a little longer uh, with that process. So, uh, you know, we, we, we go lighter on him early in the week because if you don't, he'll he'll overwork himself. So that's that's been the plan each week. Two more questions, anybody? I'm just curious, I know back in the day, you guys on your staff, you know, you, I've heard the basketball stories there. Is there a, a way you, you guys get out your competitive juices as a staff now? Is there anything that you guys do? Yeah. In the season, no. I mean, in the season, every hour is accounted for. And the hours that aren't, we want to be with our families. So it's not like, a, hey, man, we're going to go play basketball at lunchtime today. We just don't have time. Uh, the off season, there's a lot of things we do. And uh, we get a lot more time. But, you know, I, I enjoy being with my family during my off time, and most of the coaches do that too. So uh, unless you're doing something within the work hours, it's harder to, to, to do things just as a staff. We do it with our team a lot. There was the, uh, the practical joke uh, that you pulled when you had the coaches run against the players. Is any lighthearted stuff like that that you guys still do with the players? Or? All season, yeah, we do stuff like that all the time. We have chipping contests, button contest. We'll have a field goal contest. Uh, but, uh, I mean, uh, in a work week, we're trying to use every minute we can uh, towards work. So, I mean, there's a time for, for fun and things like that, uh, especially when you get a break in the action. But when you're on a week-to-week -week routine, it's harder to, to do some of those things.